Now let's look at the second uh, leg, which is the data mining. We talked about medical data, now let's see what is data mining. And data mining is a very computational field, of course. That's why everything will be blue. And um, be before we go and see algorithms that take data and make smart uh, conclusions out of the data, first of all, there is a very uh, problematic um, trend and uh, phenomenon, which is data denial. We are all aware about data denial. So um, this guy is uh, one of the greatest serial killers of all time. He is the second. He was the second president um, of South Africa after the revolution. He was uh, uh, the successor of uh, Nelson Mandela, and he ruled for about nine years. Uh, and um, today, uh, experts say say that he is responsible for the death of 365,000 people, HIV victims, HIV patients, because he had an advisor who said that the best way to treat HIV is with lemon juice and olive oil. And all the data in the world that people gave him regarding you know, retroviruses and whatnot did not help and uh, he denied that data and therefore was responsible for that uh, tragedy. But why do we go so far to Africa? What about vitamins that people buy in millions and billions? It's a really big, huge industry where there's clear data that show that in many, many cases, not all the cases, but in many cases, whatever you take, you just secrete out of the body and it, it has no effect and this is one of the greatest phenomena in life of data denial still people bite a lot and um, more serious and tragic consequences are uh, in the field of uh, vaccination and uh, probably you know the famous uh, case of uh, the correlation between autism and uh, uh, MMR sorry? MMR and the MMR vaccine uh, of uh, measles, mumps, and the rubella. Um, and here you can see a very uh, famous um, um, session that was uh, uh, given in CNN by Jenny McCarthy. So Jenny McCarthy is a famous uh, American model and actress, uh, and her son was diagnosed. Uh, with autism, unfortunately, uh, when he was two years old. And this is also the time that he was given the MMR vaccination. Well, because the two things happen when babies are two years old. So, see, she, th <laughs> she thought there's a correlation and there's a causation. And she went into live studios to talk about this very serious medical situation. You know, she's an actor, so, so she knows what she's talking about, right? And, uh, um, but that had an amazing effect. And today, you can go uh, online, search in Google, the Jenny McCarthy Body Count. It's a website that just counts in a scientific way, and they explain the methodology there. I don't know exactly what it is based upon, but they just count how many people got either uh, either died or had a, a, a serious illnesses because of the effect of Jenny McCarthy and, and, and the things that she tell pe she tells people. So here in the body count you can see number of preventable illnesses and number of preventable deaths. And here is the number of autism diagnosis sig uh, scientifically linked to vaccination. But sometimes, so we understand, sometimes just data is not enough. People are humans, unfortunately, and therefore <laughs> there is some data denied. Okay, and do you know the story about Andrew Wickfield, the doctor that was actually convicted in uh, doing this kind of manipulation for his own benefit? So he created, he's a doctor, 
but he uh, uh, fought against uh, vaccination. And that's a serious problem, the problem of uh, telling apart correlation and causation. And here in these two charts, you can see very, very nicely uh, two uh, very, very correlated uh, uh, curves. Uh, the blue one is the age of Miss America throughout the years, which is perfectly correlated with the number of murders by steam, hot vapors, and hot objects. What do we say about that? Amazing, right? Here you can see uh, another very nice correlation. Worldwide non-commercial commercial space launches perfectly correlated uh, throughout the years with the number of sociology doctorates awarded in the US. So when we have so much data, it is apparent, it is obvious that we will see correlations that mean nothing. This is just reality. And therefore, what algorithms need is knowledge. It's not just statistics. Statistics find, finds correlation. Statistics does not find causation. And if we need to go into the medical data explosion phenomenon with some kind of technology, that technology must have knowledge in order not to fall into the pitfalls of just pure statistical correlation. Do you know what is the number one, oh, we can argue, but number one, maybe number two, maybe number three, company, AI company in the world? This is a hint. Google. Google, that's right. So what Google is doing, actually people think about it maybe as a search engine, maybe as an ad platform, but more than that, that's a data mining company. So the way, if we look at search, the way they can give us so good results, it, it has many contributors. The, the very slick design, very fast operation, everything is, that's important. But even more so, it's the ability to learn from past searches of users. And this is what in the, uh, in the field of artificial intelligence we call supervised machine learning. So we look at how other people looked, searched uh, using Google the web and what kind of clicks they created and they use this kind of click dy dynamics to predict what likes, what um, uh, websites you will like and therefore change the order of the search results. So that's a very big AI company or data mining company. Another uh, very important phenomenon, a phenomenon that we need to uh, um, uh, mention is all the algorithms that target ads or target consumers with advertising. And there are advertisements and there are recommendation engines like you see here. Uh, do you know the famous uh, invention by Amazon? Customer, this is like a, a, a page of a book in Amazon. Customers who bought this item also bought these items. So it's not that necessarily these items are connected with content because they, many times it, it is the case that they are in the same genre or something. But many times it's just by looking at the data of what people who bought this book, what other kinds of book they liked. And what Amazon discovered, as well as many other companies, that these algorithms count for billions of dollars. And when you do a tweak in the algorithm and maybe change or add one component or another or one another da of data source, you see that revenues can lift, can uh, really, um, and these algorithms really make differences in the bottom line. So why not using these kinds of algorithms that were proved so efficiently in the digital world and put them in the medical world? and say maybe people or patients who took this uh, drug 
also took that drug or who had that problem also had these problems and uh, something of the sort. And the algorithms are there. The algorithms exist and they are perfect. Are there any regulations about AI? If there are regulations about AI, this is uh, one of the topics that we will discuss in the AI chapters. Uh, currently, I think the, the answer is no. And I think this is the right answer. But we will discuss that. There, have you heard about the big debate between Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook and Elon Musk from Tesla and other companies? Yes? Uh, pro and against AI. So we will also discuss that. Yes, do you want to ask something? Ethical issues. Ethical issues. Uh, yes, definitely this is something that we will discuss. We will see it more in the fourth lecture about electronic medical records. We'll also talk about that. We'll talk about encryption of medical records also. It, it connects to ethics. Okay, the IBM Watson uh, project, have you heard about him? About it? I say him because it's like a person. Uh, so that's, that's uh, the new uh, supercomputer by, by IBM. They call it Watson. It's, it's more than just a computer. It's actually a suite of many different AI tools. Uh, and I want to uh, show you uh, one of the greatest achievements of IBM Watson, of this AI machine, uh, when it played the game of Jeopardy. Do you know this is a TV trivia uh, show uh, where uh, Watson was put to the test? It's going to change how we interface with information. People are going to ask, how did it do that? How did it accomplish this task, which before we thought only humans could ever hope to do? David Hume held this view that sense and experience are the sole foundation of knowledge. Watson. What is empiricism? Watson is a question answering system. A question can be posed in natural language, and having read a whole bunch of information, data, documents, come up with a very precise answer to that question. It's an information-seeking tool that's capable of understanding your question to make sure that you get what you want, and then delivers that content through a naturally flowing dialogue. Do you have one of those? I, 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 I don't have one of those, right? It's a human standing there with their carbon and water versus the computer with all of its silicon and its main memory and its disk. After Germany invaded the Netherlands, this queen, her family, and cabinet fled to London. Maria. Who is Beatrix? No. Watson? Who is Wilhelmina? That is correct. Humans communicate very fluently in natural language. And that's where computers struggle dramatically. And that's where we want to make them better. This U.S. president negotiated the Treaty of Portsmouth, ending the Russo-Japanese War. Watson. Who is Theodore Roosevelt? Good for $800. And Jeopardy questions are tricky. They have puns in them. They have little jokes in them. A famous red-coiffed clown, or just any incompetent fool. Watson. Who is Bozo? Nice. Good job, Watson. I think we've gone from impressed to blown away. This is really remarkable performance. And we know of no computer system that can come anywhere close to doing this question answering task. Watson is the confirmed champion for this game. But the reality is that being able to win a game at Jeopardy doesn't mean you've completely con conquered the language understanding task. Far from it. In REMs, it's the end of the world as we know it. Two of the men with the initials LB. Watson? What is, I feel fine. Ooh, no. The worst thing is if Watson just crashes in the middle of the game. That's what you don't want. But then the second worst thing is if you have some horrible bug where Watson starts getting everything wrong. What are trousers? No. What is harness racing? No. What is taxi to the dark side? No. What is artificial sweetener? Come on now, no. What is milk? No. 
Very nice. Yeah. We both beat them. Good for you. <laughs> Humans. Woo. This is triage. There's a million things to consider here. Yeah. This is just one. We're going to run out of time. <laughs> We're going to run out of time. <laughs> Our responsibility to the scientific community is to push this technology as hard as we possibly can. Because when we get out there in public, what we're demonstrating is what is the state of the art? What can we really do? It's limitless, the number of things you could potentially apply this to. Watson, you have control. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, um, IBM is really a, an important player in the space of artificial intelligence. Uh, and earlier in this uh, video, they mentioned the, the former uh, championship of chess, uh, where there are a computer that was called that time Deep Blue. You know, uh, have you heard about it? That he, uh, he bet Kasparov, right? He was so intelligent, that computer, that after the match, when Kasparov lost, Kasparov actually invited Deep Blue to a rematch, and uh, and Deep Blue said no. <laughs> okay, um, I will end. I will end uh, here. Okay. Um, next uh, next lesson, we will see how they use I, how IBM uses this Watson for medical purposes. So that would be very interesting. Okay, thank you very much.